Hey everyone, today we're at Hop Dogma Brewing Co. and we're going to check out the brewing process as well as hopefully try out a few beers to decide which one we're going to use for our cooking today. So we're with Dan Littlefield and we're at a Hop Dogma Brewery and he's going to kind of just show us the process and what Hop Dogma is all about. We start with um the grain. I mean, the grain is the you know the, the soul of the beer. Really, what differentiates us from a, a lot of breweries these days. I mean, we, we tend to go, use a lot of pilsner malt. That's kind of our our thing around here. We like to make a lot of lagers, and uh, that's kind of an essential ingredient. You know, good beer starts with good malt and good water. Okay. This is our research, uh, you know, department. research and development yeah. right there. Yeah. Constant research going on. Yes. <laughs> So uh, when our brew day starts, everything starts in the mill. Okay. Uh, so we add the grain that we were just talking about in the, in the mill here. And uh, this is called an auger. So this is gonna shoot it up into the mash tun. Oh. And uh, the mash tun is uh, extremely important because as the grain gets dumped into this vessel, uh, hot water is mixed in with it, okay. and now that it's cracked, uh, the sugars are accessible for conversion into into the starches that we need. So we generally soak the malt in in the mash tun here for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half. Uh, okay. Kind of depends on the beer, and from there we we start to rinse it and we transfer it over to the boil kettle here. Okay. Uh, we get it up to boil. Uh, this is where a lot of ingredients like hops start to start. To be added. And, uh, one thing that differentiates us from a lot of breweries is that we went 100% uh, electric here. We really like the flavor we get from it because it's kind of in between a, a direct fire and a gas as far as the flavor goes. It's growing to really like a, you know brewing on an uh, electric system only you just gotta hope the power doesn't go out. <laughs> Once we are ready to, it's called uh, knocking out, we mm -hmm. will turn off the heating elements and we'll transfer it into this heat exchanger and then we add oxygen at this point because the, the yeast that we're going to add require a little bit of oxygen to kind of get going. And then we basically transfer to one of the gorgeous vessels here and uh, we add the yeast and within a few hours you should start to see something like this going on. What you're hearing and smelling and seeing is the yeast are consuming the sugars that we've created mm -hmm. uh, the, and they're off-gassing CO2 yeah. and alcohol. Mm -hmm. This generally goes on for anywhere from I'd say five to seven days. The yeast are what are, are the bosses here. Mm -hmm. and it's more about kind of listening to what they're doing I yeah. think, than anything else, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And yeah. then uh, if it's an IPA or a pale ale or sometimes some other beers, it will will add hops uh, at this point as well uh, to pr to provide additional aroma to, okay. to the beer. So that's called dry hopping, and uh, and then we'll cool it right here. Oh, yeah, you'll see this, a lot of condensation around this part. So these are lagering or crashing, and that helps bring everything to the bottom mm -hmm. so that we can package the beer and have it be nice and clear. What's the best selling brew that you guys have? I guess right now. Well, uh, for us, and I think for most breweries, mm -hmm. I, you'd have to say IPA. IPAs, yeah. yeah uh, the IPAs are incredibly popular, mm -hmm. um, almost frustratingly popular, like, because I, I love them. Yeah. yeah. I, I drink them myself, mm -hmm. but uh, you know sometimes you know you feel like that's all you're brewing. Yeah. But they are really popular, and they're uh, they're really hard to do well. They take so much more effort than a lot of other styles. Yeah. But the end result is happy customers, yeah. and that's that's what we that's what we're doing this for. So I yeah. mean, it's it, it's it's very fun to make the IPA. Brewing's an adventure. Uh, I set these up in a particular order for a reason. Like, so this first beer mm -hmm. is the, our Kolsch, okay. and this is just a—it's uh, a really exceptionally light ale. Mm -hmm. um, we call it porch porch living because it's just an easy drinking beer. Uh, we use a German Pilsner malt in there, and we use. Uh, it's really good. Tetning, it's really tetning good. hops, and it, this is a beer that's. Uh, filtered to be like brilliantly clear, mm -hmm. crisp. 
Yeah, no, I totally got that like easy pork slim because yeah. it's super smooth but actually has flavor. That is our uh, our box. It's light, but it also has a very appealing uh, kind of biscuity, chocolatey. Mm -hmm. uh, flavor to it as well. This beer took three weeks to make, that one took 10 weeks to make. So yeah, it's big, still, big it's still difference. pretty light actually, it, yeah. yeah. So does color indicate anything about flavor? Uh, a lot of times, yeah. yes. Um, in this case, uh, you know, we, we used uh, some some darker malts to, mm -hmm. to pull some chocolate roast mm -hmm. roasty uh, flavors out. Um, so the next beer is the IPA. And okay. so this is uh, this one's called Coming Up for Air. We kind of hit the reset button. We wanted to make a clear, uh, clear IPA. Mm -hmm. It's a exceptionally light body for an IPA. Uh, it's not too bitter. It's uh, it's, it's crushable. It's approachable, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a fun beer. Does that smell super fruity though? That's crazy. I think you actually might like that. <laughs> like we like actually usually well, don't like IPAs. Well, it's, from it's what really we easy to overdo IPAs. You, like you shouldn't be afraid of bitterness because it mm. it, it actually pr it helps provide that crisp crispness to it to a beer and it, and it gives it the uh, kind of a refreshing flavor for a lot of people. But, so this last one here is the by far the most different. I mean, it's it's on, it's on it's from another planet. Yeah. So this is a kettle sour beer and so this is it's really sour it's uh and it's really fruity but i'd say this is uh kind of walks that blurs that line of uh wine and beer a little bit for a lot yeah. of people i feel like it almost reminds me of a cider that i've had before as well mm -hmm. which we tend to drink a lot more a juice yeah, yeah. <laughs> just juice, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dan, for uh, yeah. showing us the way um, of beer and I guess showing us Hop Dogma and everything that you guys have to offer. Thank you. And we'll probably grab um, a growler to make some mac and cheese and uh, what was it, bread as well. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thanks, man. So we're back in the kitchen and to celebrate National Beer Day, we're going to be using the beer we got from Hop Dogma to make beer, bacon, mac and cheese and a beer bread bowl. We're going to start off making the beer bread and I'm just going to measure out all the dry ingredients first. So we're going to be using two and two third cups of bread flour, a quarter teaspoon yeast and one teaspoon of salt. Next, we're going to use the box style sore winter beer. Now I'm gonna add the warm water that's about 110 degrees and the room temperature beer. Then mix everything together until you form a dough. Next we're gonna let this sit for one hour in a warm place, but first we're just gonna put on some cling wrap. I oiled it a little bit just so that it doesn't stick. Once the hour is up, you're gonna take the dough out and just fold it a few times and then place it back in the bowl with the cling wrap. We're gonna let it rest for another hour and then repeat the process again. Once the second hour is up, we're gonna shape the bread into a bowl. This time, make sure to use a floured surface. We're just gonna flatten the dough out a bit and then fold the outsides into itself. Continue to do this until it's into a ball shape. Then flip the dough over and tuck the edges to the bottom, kind of like I'm doing here. When you're happy with the shape, place it on a baking sheet that's lightly lined with oil and cornmeal and cover it for an hour. Once it's ready, cut slits on the top to allow steam to exit while it's cooking. Then put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 450 degrees and throw in a few ice cubes to create steam. While we let the bread cool, we're gonna get started on the mac and cheese. The first thing we're gonna do is render down some bacon on low to medium heat. Once your bacon's crispy, you want to remove it from the pan and put it on a paper towel so it can soak up the excess fat and grease. Next, we'll get started on boiling the salted water, which we'll be cooking our pasta in. Today, we're going to be using some fusilli pasta just because it has a ton of ridges and a lot of surface area that you can get all that cheese sauce on. While we wait for the water to boil, I'm just going to melt a quarter cup of butter. Now that it's melted, I'm going to use a sifter for the flour while whisking to prevent clumping. We're adding flour to thicken up the mixture and we want to keep mixing it until it's completely incorporated. Now that the water is boiling, we're going to add the pasta and cook it until it's al dente. Once the butter flour mixture is all smooth, we're gonna start incorporating the milk and the heavy cream. And today we're gonna be using the Porch Livin' Beer. It's a Kolsch from Hop Dogma. 
We'll add in three quarter cup along with an extra splash just for us. And then we're gonna be needing to add some additional salt, garlic powder, some smoked paprika if you like, and some black pepper. Once we add in all these ingredients, we're gonna bring it up to a boil and we can lower the temperature and keep mixing until the mixture is thick. So now that it's boiling, we're gonna just lower the heat a little bit. And then now we can incorporate all the cheeses. We'll be adding some California cheddar cheese. And then we're gonna be using some Munster cheese. Next, we'll add in Parmesan, and then we'll be using mozzarella cheese, which will help to create a more stringy texture. Then we can stir all these together until it's incorporated. Once the pasta was done, we drained it, and now we're gonna pour it into this baking dish. And then we'll pour the cheese sauce on top and mix it all together. Now that we've mixed the cheese and the pasta together in the baking dish, we're gonna put it uncovered, cooking in the oven for 10 minutes at 390 degrees. While the mac and cheese is in the oven, we're gonna start hollowing out the bread in order to make the bread bowl. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut into the bread on a 45 degree angle, and we're gonna go around until we make a full circle. From there, we can just start hollowing out the bread from the lid and the insides. You can use the leftover bread for other recipes, and in our case, we're gonna be using it to make bread pudding. And you have a nice vat of bubbling cheese. So what we're gonna do now, cause we're gonna be a little extra with it, is put the pasta and cheese in a bread bowl and we're gonna top it off with some of that crispy cut bacon that we have. And we actually also toasted some panko breadcrumbs to put both on top for a little extra texture. So we just have some toasted breadcrumbs that we're gonna sprinkle over. And now we're gonna add in some of that crispy bacon that we have and we cut it up into tinier pieces. Now we're gonna pop it in the oven for five more minutes. All right, I'm gonna go for it. Okay, while you do that, I'm gonna have some of this porch living. It's uh, the Kolsch from Hop Dogma. Mm. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Um, the bacon and the pinko add a really good crust on the top, really good texture. Mm -hmm. And you know, I definitely think it's really cheesy and have little hints of a beer in it. Want some beer? Yeah. Oh, cheese drink. Yeah. Oh yeah, you definitely get that crunch. Yeah, you taste the beer, right? Mm -hmm. It's like kind of mild, but it's still noticeable. A beer is super subtle. It's not really a hoppy flavor, but you can definitely taste it a little bit. So we actually use two different kinds of beer. Um, like we mentioned before, the bock for the bread and the kolsch for the um, mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can taste the difference between the two, but I do taste something yeah. and it influences a little bit. So I'm just going to dig in for I some more. I want to try the bread. So we had the bread earlier when we ate, when we, we ate some of the insides out. I definitely tasted a little bit of the, the beer in it, but it was also pretty mild. Um, maybe next time I make it, I'll probably add a little bit more beer or change the ratio of water to beer. I took a really big bite, but um, yeah, I think the, the bread also adds a really good texture. And yeah, mac and cheese bread bowl was a great idea. And again, if you don't taste as much beer flavor as you want to in your food, you can always just supplement it. And <clears throat> definitely want to give a huge shout out um, to Hop Dogma and mm -hmm. especially Dan Littlefield, one of the founders, owners. Um, they showed extreme hospitality and they gave us a nice tour and we appreciate everything from them and we'll probably head on back to their brewery again. Yeah. Would you make this again? Um, yeah, I think I would. Maybe not in this portion size because we made way too much yeah, for two, hu too much. two human people, <laughs> but uh, we'll probably give some to our neighbors and share with our friends. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like and maybe a subscribe to our channel and the recipe is gonna be in the description below. Thanks for watching, bye.